I'm Bernie Keefe. We're out here in Lake Granby, Colorado. I'm with my very good friend, Nate Zielinski, fellow guide, fellow pro staff member. We're gonna be fishing lake trout out here today, anywhere from five feet deep down to 90 feet deep, we're using tube jigs. We're Ice Team, bring it! While the picturesque backdrop of the Rocky Mountains as they loom over Lake Granby in Colorado can be breathtaking, so is the temperature, especially when you kick the day off at negative 15 degrees. Oh, the purr. Gotta love that action there. Hear that? Hard and even though lake trout can be found year-round on lakes all over the northern part of the United States. I bet you a buck I get the fish before you do. Loser has to sign the dollar and say something nice about the winner. No, a dollar's fine, but saying something nice about you. Few places can boast the pristine beauty that cradles the monsters lurking in Lake Granby, Colorado's largest body of water. I mean, just look at the size, look at the peck fins, the face, the jaw, the teeth, everything about this fish, the dorsal, they're just large. They're just like, I mean, just awesome. I mean, there's really no word else to describe it. Just awesome. Check out his mouth. Check out the teeth on his tongue. That's an amazing predator right there. He's uh, everything, stuff goes in, does not come out. So far, these Rocky Mountain lake trout are variably suspended, but keying in around humps, and in the grand scheme of the pattern, their apex predator attitude is making it a real mental game of not when to move, but actually how far to move. You know, Bernie, this spot sucks. Nate, these aren't perch. You gotta give the, the fish a chance to materialize here. You gotta let it materialize. I'll show you materialize. That's what's materialized That's in this spot. That's on, buddy. <laughs> in addition to patterning, another one of the most important aspects of ice fishing for lake trout is how to handle these big, toothy, powerful fish, not only through the ice. That's what's materialized of Don't this Don't fight spot. the fat guy. He'll always lay on you. But also above it, in sub-zero temps, effectively and safely for both the angler and the trout as well. Right here. It's a good fish, Nate. Absolutely. You know, Bernie, let's talk real quick about landing these fish. What are our options as far as landing these particular fish? You know, you like to lip them. I like to use a leather glove. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a 30 inch or plus. But since he won't open his mouth, I'll scoop him out. Lot him out. Last thing you want to do is put your hands in his gills. Okay. The other thing you don't want to do is let their head flop around on the ice and have them hit the ice. And you want to return to the water quick. Um, his eyes are starting to glaze up and we got to get him back in the water. We go wait for that kick and there he goes. You know, one of the biggest keys to being successful as a western lake trout angler is taking the advantage of taking a run and gun approach. Having a lot of spots and being the, or the ability to cover a lot of water is really key. What do you think, Bernie? I agree totally. Lake trout are always cruising around. They're gonna just come on the humps and leave the humps, come on the humps. You can do the run and gun, you can sit still. We prefer the run and gun because it keeps us active, keeps us hoping. Every new hole is a new spot, Absolutely. You new hope. You're talking about a large fish. It's a heavy predator. They can gain a meal very quickly. And we don't ever want to call them lazy because I don't think they're lazy, but you can think of that mindset as far as the fact that they take advantage and they're an opportunistic feeder. If the food's plentiful, they'll stay. You know, so once you're on a location, I personally, once I fish that spot, if I see fish or don't see fish, when I move, I tend to move a longer distance. I go to a whole new area, you know, to absolutely have new fish. Now, Bernie, a lot of times we talk about you might move 10 feet. Both of them work for both of our situations. They both do. You pull on a hump, you pick what you think is the prime spot, and you go ahead and drill, and you fish that, and you leave. When I pull on a hump, I don't know that the fish know that that's a prime spot. Yep. So I drill the whole hump up and we fish the entire thing. I'm a guy who believes a 30 pound fish won't move 10 feet to eat a tube jig. Yep. If they see a 12 inch coke swim by, yeah, they're gonna swim it and eat it. Nate and Bernie are using 40 inch heavy action rods for angling in these larger suspended lake trout. The heavy action covers the force they need for the hook set, while the 40 inch length allows them to more easily feel the bottom from a standing position in order to set the initial depth of their jigs. Oh, there's fish suspended. But the use of longer, heavier action rods is but one of many of the unique aspects you'll discover when exploring this type of ice fishing. It's really gotta be all over this call and playing that keeps away. You know, Bernie, that's so important just to keep it away from. Like how these lake trout react to both their prey and each other. Oh, he's gonna bite, he's gonna bite. Oh, yeah! <laughs> when feeding suspended. 
You know, Bernie, right then when I hooked him, you can see the other one's chasing him back up. That is some cool stuff, ain't it? I tell you what, that right there, we had three mature lake trout, you know, three fish probably in that 30 inch range, maybe larger, just after that bait. You know, and then one of the things, you have multiple fish like that, sometimes it helps you, sometimes it hurts you. Oh, he's a good fish. He's a good fish. He's there a good he is right there. He's just beating the edge of that ice. You like them to wear out a little deeper, just so they're not doing what this fish is doing right here. Look at that drag. I mean, just, I mean, that run right there, Bernie, had to have been 50, 60, 70 feet. Anytime you're talking freshwater fish, we're in the Rockies, and fish are pulling out, I mean, sometimes hundreds of feet of line, you can't beat it. That fish went right back down to the bottom. And that's what they do. They just come up for you and then they go straight back exactly. down. And you can feel the energy level to these fish. You know, they'll burp, let out some air as you're bringing them up. You'll feel those big runs. I mean, just a powerhouse. There he is right there. Oh my gosh, that's a good fish. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Got All right on. One of four right there. They were stacked up. Got a nice one. Awesome. They fight just like it's nobody's business. Same thing, huge peck fins. Just a dinosaur of a freshwater fish. You can't beat that right there. You know, the coolest part too, Bernie, look at the purple inside those fish. Those, those are just amazing fish, you aren't know. they? Fish is right there in that 30 inch mark. Let's put him back. Hold it to that one kick. There's the kick. Oh! Go. Feel that kick. Oh, good job, Nate. Good job, buddy. All right, man. Hey, you know when you saw them fish following yep. up? You know why they follow them? What is that? They're hoping they're going to regurgitate their food. You know, you, you always hear about that kind of stuff, just like saltwater fish would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll come up, you'll, they'll regurgitate their food. If you're fishing with your buddies out here and a guy has a fish on, Keep man, a, buddy, a couple buddies, yep. one buddy should come over and help yep. land it, but the other guy should be fishing As really hard. As we were hard. fighting that fish, and we literally saw in the vex, my fish that I hooked came up and tailing right behind it, two to three others. Same thing, hoping for the food, almost creating our own feeding frenzy. Exactly. Our own boil type situation. That's exactly so what that's goes on That's a good thing. If you're there. not helping each other out, stay fishing. That's a good yeah. tip. Yeah. Bring it. Ice Team Tactics, brought to you by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. Hey guys, let me show you what we're using out here today. We're using tube jigs. Pretty simple, just basic four to six inch tube jigs. The color selection I use is just three, three colors is all I ever need. I need light, I need medium, and I need dark. You're fishing underneath the ice, you're fishing fairly deep. It's pretty dark down there. I think it's all shades of gray. So I don't think it really matters what we're doing down there as long as you got the three general colors. So those are my three colors I like. One of the big keys we have is how our jig sits in the water. We want it horizontal. Sitting like this, nothing lives in the water like that, so you want to keep it horizontal. I mold my lead heads with a little bit of extra lead on them, and that helps keep it flat. Then tied to the jig, I use Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, 10 pound test. If you're going up after bigger Lakers, you can beef it up. Um, 30 to 40 inch Lakers here in Colorado, 10 pound test really seems to do the job well. You can get them in pretty quick. And then the last thing I like to talk about is if, if they're not hitting the big jigs and I want to size down, these are the ones I really like. Lindy Fuzzy Grubs, little Berkeley Havoc tubes, stuff like that, power tubes, um, little Fuzzy Grubs, What's It Grubs, just little white tube jigs, put a little color on the head, it doesn't matter what color, just give it a little, little change down there, tip it a little piece of meat, man, it works great down here for these fish, especially when they're not hitting the big jigs. So this fish right now, guys, is hovering between about three feet and five feet off the bottom. He's doing what we call the dance. So he literally is dropping down, almost bluff charging me, spinning around and coming right back up. And he's been doing that now for what, 30, 40 seconds. He's just hovering, you know, somewhere between again that three and five foot mark, just deciding what he's doing. He's kind of inverting so he can look straight down on it. Then he's kind of coming back up and just sitting there. Like right now he's starting to drop down. Look at him dropping. Oh, he's coming down, Nate. Oh. oh, be ready, be ready. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, he's gonna oh. There he is, got him. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> Look at that. You know, I think that hard hook set stepping back is one of the most important things, just to bury that hook in that hard jaw. You know, it keeps, it keeps your line tight. Backing up is just like reeling in. That's just, that was a good hook set, Nate. We're gonna get this one up. That fish came in, I was working at high, low. You'd see the fish coming up to it. i just take it away from it. It's weird. So many anglers have a hard time ever wanting to pull the bait away from a particular fish. This is a big fish, guys. 
You know, so they have such a hard time taking away from them. And in that situation, you almost have to. How I like to think of it, basically, if that fish is coming in, if you slow down and let him really look at it, you give him a chance to think. If he thinks, he can make the right decision for him and swim away. You move it so fast, you don't give him a chance to think. Boom, you get that hook up. Another way to look at it, Nate, a rainbow or a kokanee, another fish ain't going to stop and talk Very to a lake true. trout. That's They're going to run from them. So if something slows down, the lake trout's going to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a fisherman up there. I, I met him before. I don't like him. Look at that drag. This fish is just running. He's just sitting on bottom right now. You know, you, I pull him up two, three feet, he goes down three, four feet. Look at that. You almost have to hold it with two arms. They're pulling so hard. I mean, these are good fish. They're just so powerful. That tail. They're Unbelievable. amazing. That big, there's a big old tail on them for power. Oh, look at that fish. Look at that fish. See him rolling by the hole? Uh, doing everything he can do to spit that hook. And you ain't going to let him, are you? I am not. Your head's in my way, Bernie. I got a big head. They call me pumpkin head. Grab him. Grab him. That's how you <laughs> whip a lake trout. <laughs> ain't no oh, large mouth up here in Bambi. How sweet is that? You know when you land these fish, we like to wear the, the leather gloves. That way you can reach down and lip them like a lip, lip them like a bass. Beautiful fish, awesome. Look at the fins, the colors, and that one hit it suspended. That Talk one hit about it suspended. a rarity. There's, I mean, it's unbelievable to literally try to take your bait away from a fish like this. When people know you're catching these magnitude of fish, everything they do, they're like, don't take it away from them, and that's what you have to do. Keep them fired up. You know, the sport of ice fishing has come a long way in the last few years. It's obviously a sport that we all cherish and love. But I can tell you what, what can totally change that and make this wonderful sport into a miserable one is not being prepared. And lately, I can tell you right now, this has actually changed all my fishing, is these blue suits by Ice Harbor. You know, I can go out here now in sub-zero, 15, 20 below, to where typically you couldn't even go on the ice. You know, you were limited to inside a shelter. That's where now you can fish outside in the most extreme conditions. And I can tell you, this suit right here is built by by ice fishermen for ice fishermen. I mean, the legs zip up completely, knee pads when we're on the ice landing fish. It's got more pockets, top and bottom, than you know what to do with. You know, pockets for our gloves, hats, spare everything, GPS, cell phones. I mean, absolutely 100% everything was thought of going into this style suit for ice fishing. I mean, they built it for these conditions, and it allows us, you know, to be on the ice more, producing more fish because we can handle anything that the environment can provide. You know you're right, Nate. Those suits are awesome. The underrated things that I really like, we've been fishing, we started the day with 15 below out. We came out in the ultra gloves. I ended up switching to fleece. These two gloves are all you need while you're fishing. Then the boots are incredible. When you pull these out, they got removable liners. Once again, it was 15 below this morning when we started. We love to fish inside our shelters. We love to fish outside even more. The more comfortable we are, the more fish we catch. Ice Team would like to thank the following partners for their support. Arctic Cat. Clam. Gander Mountain. Ice Armor. Jason Mitchell Elite Series. Mr. Heater. Recycled fish. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters. Thorn Brothers Custom Rods and Tackle. And Vexilar.